you don't have to wash your hands. I have so much time to myself. Hey, walk away when I'm talking to you. My kids really respect my privacy. When this timer goes off, please turn it off and do not tell me. Thanks. Here, can you use up all my battery? Don't call me when you get there. I don't want to know where you are. It is just too quiet in this car. Okay, we're about to leave for church, so if you're gonna make a huge mess, you better do it now. I don't know, your dad usually does everything around here. All of these people are such good drivers. Eating dinner is completely optional. Hanging up your towel is completely optional. Flushing the toilet is completely optional. Okay, this time, can you smile more like a crazed lunatic? Hey, you wanna dig through the fridge for the fifth time today? i definitely rather be here than at the beach. I am loving the look of these chips on the floor. I am loving the smell of your feet in my face. I am loving this back pain. Get a massage, ew, no thanks. Take anything you want from my closet and don't worry about putting it back. Don't look at the camera, look over there. If your sister takes your toy, just give her a good smack on the head. Hey, come drink that grape juice in here on the carpet. It's dinner time, everybody come get a snack. Hey, did you know you can wear the same pair of underwear all week long? My mom never said that. Okay, anyway, uh, but I'm so glad you are here today on Mother's Day. Uh, we have an outline, uh, some message notes for you. and. If you're joining us online, please go to centeringyourlives.com. You'll see uh, some thoughts put down about why we celebrate Mother's Day and why it's so important. And because moms bring a lot of understanding to our lives. And so I've just titled this message, Mom Sense. I don't know if that was a good title or not. But um, the idea behind it is that uh, moms are a blessing to us. They really are. Listen to what this is point one on your uh, outline here. Godly moms are a blessing from the Lord. And I get that from Proverbs 31, verses 28 and 30. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty doesn't last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Man, that is true. I mean, but how could it be true that you surpass them all? I mean, how could every woman surpass every other woman? Well, it's basically saying... My mom's the best. No, my mom's the best. And I'd love it if we have that kind of battle. Because it is important that we celebrate all that moms add to our lives. The reason that little video is funny, because there's a lot of truth in it. I mean, moms are involved in all sorts of things. And sometimes people ask me, do we make too much out of Mother's Day? It's like, no, I, my mom passed away uh, 11 years ago. I wish I would have done a much better job of celebrating her. I do. And if you have a chance to celebrate your mom today, take it. I want to give you some good reasons why today. We have a word of prayer with me, please? Lord, I just thank you for moms. One of the big blessings in my life has been my mom. I'm grateful for her and all that she added to my life. And I'm glad that she is safe in your arms right now. But Lord, there are a lot of moms listening to the sound of my voice today. And Lord, I pray this will be an encouraging message to them. I pray that they'll be uh, encouragement and understanding for all of us as we go through this message today. Because it's important we understand the roles that moms play as well as how to support them in that. So Lord, speak and move me out of the way. Teach us what you want us to know about being godly moms and how important they are. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Well, it's important to remind ourselves that godly moms have good sense. That's where the mom sense comes from, that they pass on to their children. Proverbs 31, 26, when she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. I mean, that is so true. A godly mom will tell her children what they need to hear and they accept it, even if they wouldn't accept it from anybody else because they know mom loves them. And she'll say it as kindly as she can. Yeah, please do not wear that shirt. It looks terrible. Okay, that type of thing. She's got your best interest in mind. But I, I never forget, um, it's not just my mom, uh, Debbie's mom, my mother-in-law, um, she has given me good and wise advice that was terribly helpful. I, one example of that would be uh, after our youngest son was born, uh, our oldest son was six, our middle son was four, and then we had a newborn. And during that first year there, I was in seminary and uh, we were living in a small house. Money was tight. 
time was tight and my wife was home with all three little ones, uh, you know, when, during the summertime and other things too, where it was just, it was just a real big crush on her. And uh, her mom called me one day and just said, hey, John, you know, I don't normally give you advice and so this, but I think you need to give Debbie, you need to arrange it that Debbie can have a night off, you know, every week so she can get out and mingle with some friends and just get out of the house every now and then because this is just really wearing on her. And she called me at work one day and I, I remember I came home that evening and I said, hey, darling, how would you feel if, um, you know, if we worked out the schedule so you could get a, a night off every week? And she said, what made you think of that? And I said, well, I'm just a sensitive guy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she knew I was lying. And so she said, no, really, what happened? <laughs> I said, well, your mom called. And this is, if you knew Debbie's mom, Debbie's mom never, I mean, she's very polite and doesn't want to get involved in our business. And, but she just felt like that was so important. And it was. And Debbie got involved in a community organization with a bunch of other women. And, man, it just, just brought a whole lot of energy and joy to her life. And I just thank God for her mom. Hmm. My son, obey your father's commands. Uh, and don't neglect your mother's instruction. Keep their words always in your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, their counsel will lead you. When you sleep, they'll protect you. When you wake up, they'll advise you. For their command is a lamp and their instruction is a light. Their corrective discipline is a way to life. I mean, for those of us who are still living with your, at home for kids, I mean, listen, to the, listen to your mom. I mean, God gives us moms to warn us and protect us from all kinds of foolish things. Oh my goodness, that's what it's talking about here. They'll advise you if you listen to your wor their words. I mean, your father's words too, but we're celebrating moms today. So it's important for us to understand that also that godly moms help us understand how much God loves us. Not only do they have good sense they pass on, they also help us understand God's love. Listen to Isaiah 46.3. Listen to me, descendants of Jacob, all you who remain in Israel. I've cared for you since you were born. Yes, I carried you before you were born. I'll be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you. I'll care for you. I will carry you along and save you. I mean, this is how much God loves us. And when you read that, you think, oh, man, I mean, uh, this is the way a mom feels toward her children, too. I mean, we get to experience some of this. And when we experience our mother's love, when they love us our whole life long and they care for us, oh, it just adds so much to our lives. Another reference here, Isaiah 49, 14. Yet Jerusalem says, the Lord's deserted us. The Lord has forgotten us. Never can a mother forget her nursing child. Can she feel no love for the child she's born? But even if that were possible, I wouldn't forget you. God says, hey, you know how much a mother loves her nursing child? Yeah, I love you way more than that. I mean, God doesn't forget us. When times get hard and the Israelites had been taken captive to Babylon and they thought God had forgotten all about them and God had told them it was coming and that there would be punishment coming but he would bring them back one day and he said I haven't forgotten you I mean we think God forgets us but we're the ones who forget him and our moms help us understand that I I took the the job that originally got me from Kansas where I grew up to Alabama was uh, I'd graduated with an engineering degree uh, from Kansas State, took a job with a company based out of Minneapolis, and they sent me down to Montgomery uh, to redesign one of their facilities here. And um, so that's what got me here. And when I moved here, I drove from Kansas, drove through Dallas, and stayed with a friend overnight, and then drove from Dallas to, to Montgomery, and then got involved, got in the hotel, got to work out, went and went to dinner, some other things. And so it was like three days before I called my parents. There were no cell phones those days. Dinosaurs were still roaming. Okay. Anyway, <coughs> but it'd been like three days. My mom was on the phone. She goes, John, where are you? I go, well, I'm in Montgomery, Alabama. And she goes, well, it's been three days. Why didn't you call? We didn't even, because I really just told them I was going to Montgomery and left. Okay. And my mom was so worried. And she says, don't do that to me. I mean, you were on my mind the whole time. And I went, oh, yeah, I guess that was true. I mean, but, you know, once my mom forgot about me, I forgot about calling her. I mean, think how that relates, that pictures the relationship with the Lord. And my mom, it wasn't just at one time in my life. My mom, 
I mean, she loved me all the way, every day of her life. In fact, the day before she passed, I was with her. And uh, one of the hardest things that Debbie and I had gone through in our life was that uh, before our three sons were born, we had a little girl and she only lived for a couple of hours. Her name was Taylor Catherine. She was born prematurely. And um, before my mom passed, um, she grabbed my hand. And she said, I just want you to know, I'm not going to be long for this world. I mean, she knew she was dying. And um, she said, but I want you to know, when I get to heaven, I'm going to find Taylor Catherine, and I'm going to give her a big hug for you. <clears throat> My mom never stopped thinking about me. or my brothers and sisters, or our kids. That is one ten trillionth of how much God thinks about us. And moms help us understand that. It's one of the reasons we're grateful for moms. So here's a life application. You and I need to celebrate and thank our moms often, not just today, but today's a good day. Let's do it. Reward her for all she's done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. So it's biblical if you stand up at the restaurant today, let me publicly declare praise. Uh, please don't do that. Some of you will now do that. I'm sorry, I put that in your head. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to put anybody on the spot, but it is important that we do acknowledge our moms and acknowledge how much they do for our kids, how much they've done for you. Here's another life application. We need to show our aging moms the same love and care they showed us. Take care of any widow who has no one else to care for her, but if she has children or grandchildren, their first responsibility is to show godliness at home and repay their parents by taking care of them. This is something that pleases God. I mean, as I told you, my mom passed away 11 years ago, so 10, 12 years ago, we went through losing my dad and then my mom and her health failing and taking care of her in that situation. And right now we're currently going through that situation with my wife's mom. I mean, and it's something to watch Debbie and her brother and her sister and our families uh, try to live, do our best to live out that verse because Debbie's mom has added so much to all of their lives and to all of us. And we want to repay her and her godly influence on us by taking care of her, helping take care of her the best we can. It's important. Secondly, it's important to understand that godly moms embrace God's perspective on children and parenting. I mean, this is part of that mom sense. They not only have good sense on, hey, good wisdom, but they have a good understanding and a good perspective on children and parenting in the first place. Godly moms view their children as gifts from the Lord. Children are a gift from the Lord. They're a reward from him. Psalm 127.3. Could we read that verse out loud together, please? Children are a gift from the Lord. They're a reward from him. Now, sometimes children don't feel like a reward, okay? <laughs> what kind of reward is that? But I will tell you this is what, as, you know, after Debbie and I have raised our sons and now we're in the grandparent stage and other things, each stage has its trials and its rewards. And the older you get, the more you agree with that verse. They truly are a gift and a reward. Godly moms thank God for their kids and ask God to reveal his plans for each of them. You saw me before I was born. This is Psalm 139, 16. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Oh my goodness, that's in God's book. He knows exactly what kind of plans he has for each of our kids. But as a mom, you don't. And this is why we pray. God, would you show them what you want them to do with their, their lives. Would you show me what part I have to play in that? Moms, you're a key part of that. You can see potential in your kids they can't see. You can also see some things that they need to be warned about that they don't acknowledge. And because moms give wisdom with kindness, you're probably the only person who can tell them that they might hear that from. Take advantage of it. That's an important role for moms. 
to pray for their kids, ask for the plan, and then to speak with kindness. Godly moms often remind their children that they love them and God loves them even more. I mean, this is what we were talking about with mom, moms revealing love. Well, they not only model it, but they tell us this. Paul talked this way in Ephesians 3. He said, I pray that you and all of God's holy people will have the power to understand the greatness of Christ's love, just how wide and how long and how high and how deep that love is. Christ's love is greater than anyone can ever know, but I pray that you'll be able to know that love. Then you'll be filled with the fullness of God. I mean, that is our prayer. Oh, man, if I could just show you, if I could just tell you how much God loves you. I mean, our kids need this. We all need this. God's love for us is outrageous. And our moms help us understand that. Moms, you are so key in that. Tell, them, tell your kids you love them every day. Remind them that Jesus loves them infinitely more. It's important that godly moms uh, view raising godly kids as an eternally significant assignment from the Lord too. I mean, there are some people in our culture that don't view children as a gift from the Lord. Children are a handicap to a career. They're just going to mess up your finances. They're going to keep you from excelling. They're holding you back. But the Bible doesn't speak about kids that way. And the Bible looks at mothering and raising a child as an eternally significant task. Eternally significant for your children and all the people your children will influence. I'll show you some verses on this. Listen, O Israel, this is from Deuteronomy 6. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. This is when uh, Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment in the Bible was. That's it. He's quoting Deuteronomy 6, 4 and, or, and 6, 5. And you must uh, commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you're on the road, when you're in the drive through at Chick-fil-A. Oh, I mean, I added that part. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> But you get the idea here. When you're going to bed and when you're getting up, in the margin, you can just write teachable moments. You never know when those moments are. You don't. When are the teachable moments? Well, sometimes the teachable moment is right after a kid just lost a ball game and they're taking it really hard. Moms, that's a, you never know what impact you have. Teaching your kids how to win is important. Teaching kids how to lose is important. They're gonna have wins and losses in life. How to handle disappointment. Giving good counsel on after they just break up with a girlfriend that you might secretly be glad they broke up with anyway. <laughs> Takes real wisdom. Moms, it's an incredible gift. You're there for the teachable moments. It's eternally significant too because you get to introduce them to the Lord and teach them the Lord's commands your kids. This is what God has testified. He's given us eternal life. This life is in his son. Whoever has a son has life. Who does not have God's son does not have life. I've written this to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. I mean, this is the case. When you and I tell our children about Jesus and that he died on the cross to pay the penalty for all our sins, Paid the penalty in full. He took all the wrath that was due us and gave us his righteousness. He suffered so we could go free. He died so we could live eternally with him in heaven and abundant life while we're here on earth through the power of the Holy Spirit. When we explain all these things to our children, that's eternally life-changing. There's no greater joy than when you get to introduce your own kids to Jesus and get to be there when they're baptized. What a tremendous gift. There's nothing more eternally significant than that. But it's not just for them, it's also for all the people they will influence. Listen to this. Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.5, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I know the same faith continues strong in you. The book of Acts tells us in Acts 14, we find out Paul went on a missionary journey and one of the places he stopped was a city called Lystra. Well, Timothy and Eunice and Lois all lived in Lystra. And a number of people became believers when uh, Paul and Barnabas went there. Well, on a second missionary journey, 
Paul came back to that area again. This would be three or four years later. And this time he met a young man named Timothy. And apparently the first time around, Lois and Eunice had become believers. And during those three or four years while he was gone, they had told Timothy about Jesus and he became a real believer. And Paul was so impressed with him that Paul took him with him on his missionary journeys and Paul uh, discipled him. He became one of Paul's right-hand men. When somebody needed to be encouraged, he'd send Timothy. So when Lois and Eunice became Christians and they shared their faith with Timothy, just when he was just a, a young, very young man, a teenager, well, that radically transformed his life, but then he became a person who assisted Paul, the best missionary ever. I mean, one day we're gonna meet Lois and Eunice in heaven and we'll go, wow. I mean, what difference did they make? What difference did they make? Lois and Eunice were the ones who instilled a genuine faith in Timothy, Paul used him to minister to people all over the place. There's going to be all, there will be all kinds of people in heaven that came up to them and said, thank you for your investment in Timothy. Timothy shared the gospel with me. Timothy discipled me. Thank God you poured your life into him. I mean, one day we're going to meet him and go, man, yeah, but Lois, what's with Eunice? That You could have picked a better name. Yeah, I don't know. We, would have, we probably won't say that. We probably will say Oh my goodness, thank you for investing in this young man. I mean, first and second Timothy in the Bible, it's that Timothy, Paul wrote this young man. That's how much he, and those letters have been kept because they're so insightful and impactful and spiritually powerful. How do you know how much difference you're making today as you raise your kids, mom? I mean, who knows what God is gonna do with their lives? I think most of us would agree, Billy Graham's mom did a pretty good job. Eternally significant. Godly moms see their children as saints under construction. Train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old, he won't depart from it. That's a proverb, not a promise. We all know of people who are raised in godly homes and kids still chose to do things that their parents did not approve of. But a proverb is how things genuinely work and I think we all understand that if we spend our time training our children in godliness, then those are lessons that are important for them to learn young and they'll embrace them as they age. That's generally the way things work. And that's why it's so important. We get to be a part of that. Godly moms do the best they can. Colossians 3.23 says, in all the work you do, do your work heartily, or as the New Century Version translated it, work the best you can. I mean, this is give it your all, is what that means. Give it your, put your whole heart into it. Work as if you were doing for the Lord, not for people. And I like this translation because it reminds us, hey, if we're doing our best, if we're putting our heart into raising our kids, we're doing the best we can. I'm not a perfect parent. There are no perfect parents. There are no perfect moms. But if we pray for our kids and ask the Lord to show us, hey, what's your plan? Lord, what's my role in this? Oh my goodness, Debbie and I remember many times we would pray at night for our kids or we'd pray throughout the day. They were facing some big challenge and other things. And oh man, we go, Lord, you gotta show us how to do this. It's confusing and confounding. But I was always so grateful when I had all kinds of ministry things going on that were pulling me away or I was studying seminary, like I said, and I wasn't able to be there for some things. I was so grateful that Debbie was there being a godly mom to our boys, making the most of those teachable moments when they came. It's important. So here's a life application for all of us. We need to pray for moms and ask God to empower them so they will fulfill their eternally significant assignments. If we all agree that this is eternally significant and that moms have these rare opportunities when they come up, these teachable moments, and we all agree that moms can say with kindness some things that others can't say, they can walk where angels dare to tread or fear to tread, then it's like, oh my goodness, we should pray for them. So we keep on praying for you, Paul wrote to the Thess Thessalonians. We keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. 
I mean, think about this. I mean, that applies to all of us, but certainly to moms. What if we prayed for moms? Mom, may God give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do as a mom. I had a fella walk out today and he said, man, this is what jumped off the whole page for him today. He was walking out, it was, it was after the first service. And he said, I just got to tell you, he goes, I, I, you know what I can do? I, you know what I can do for my, for my wife? I can pray for her that she'll be a good mom and God will give her the power to get her job done. And his wife goes, it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a miracle happen here, apparently. Uh, but no, it's true. Fellas, any husband here who has a wife who's raising kids with you, any dad here, pray for your wife, pray for the mom of your children. God, would you give them the power to love kids even when kids aren't lovable? Would you give them the ability to speak wisdom with kindness that our son or daughter may not hear from anybody else? God, would you help them understand the plan for our children that you have for our children so they can and their role in that. Oh, this is great stuff. And if you're a child still living with your parents, God, would you help my mom guide me? Then the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored because of the way you live and you'll be honored along with him. That is so true. And finally, I mean, godly moms also have good sense in this. They grow and mature in their parenting roles as their children grow and mature. I mean, this is important to understand that as our children grow and mature, our roles change. So I've made a little chart here. I got this at a, um, took my sons to a father-son camp and they, they were at a place called J.H. Ranch and they had this understanding. I remember that was just, life-changing for me. They said, when your kids are born, then the first role you have is kind of like a caretaker and a cop. I mean, when a kid, a baby is lying there, they're helpless. You have to feed them, change them. I mean, they can't do anything for themselves. But then as they grow, it turns into kind of like a cop. You have to stop them from doing things. You have to put the latches on the cabinet doors and the gates at the top of the stairs. And you tell them, don't run out in traffic. And don't drink the Drano and all that, you know, all that stuff. And, um, you know, it's like, I remember our, uh, one of our sons, he was real quiet. He was about, about two years old, I guess, or something like this. And he was real quiet one day. And I was wondering, to the house, where did he go? And we had this big golden retriever at the time. We always had the dog food, this big tub, of, you know, dog chow or whatever. So he's out in the backyard and he's got this big tub and he's lift, somehow lifted the, dra- dragged it out there, lifted the lid off that. He and the dog are sitting out in the backyard giving a piece to the dog, he's eating a piece, (laughs) a piece to the dog, you know, and I have to go break this up. And it was hard because his teeth were really white and his hair was so shiny and all. (laughs) No, sorry. But, but when you have little kids, that's what you're doing. I mean, you're just constantly trying to run ahead of them. Well, when they're little, you have to do that. But by the time they're 18, that has to stop completely. I mean, when kids are graduating from high school and moving on with their lives, they don't need a cop watching over everything they do. They don't need a caretaker taking care of everything for them. In between is where, this is where we're growing them up. And that brings us to the second role. The second role is that of a coach. A coach isn't just trying to keep you away from bad stuff. He's trying to show you how to do good stuff, teach you new skills. Enhancing this, teaching you to be a team player, encouraging you, training you, disciplining you. Hey, didn't do that. If you do that, you're going to drop and give me 20. You got potential, and here's how we're going to get you in shape, and here's how we're going to work on that. And so this starts early on when they're just a couple years old, but it stops pretty much here around 18 too. I mean, I got to be a coach. This is when I teach them to drive, teach them to hit a curveball teach them to manage money, teach them how to do laundry. I want to teach them to be independent. They start out dependent on me. I want them to be dependent on God, not on me. I want them to be independent of me. I only have a few years to do this. That's my role 
At first, it's to protect them from everything. Now it's to show them how to handle things on their own. And when they leave the house and as they go through life, the third role is this role of the counselor consultant. My wife and I are here now with all of our kids. This is 100% of what we do. We don't go and check their house. We're not coaching them, but we are available. Hey, if they need, if they need a consult, if they need a counsel, heck, if they need a babysitter, we're there. But the point is, is that godly moms know their roles have to change. I mean, we all hear these horror stories of helicopter parents who are still doing this. I mean, when I, we took our kids to uh, opening day when we took them off to college, they'd have these parent sessions. They go, parents, and they would talk about it, helicopter parents and all this. <clears throat> and they'd say, when your kids are here now, you've trained them to be independent. You gotta let them, some of you have, are really struggling with this. You gotta let them be on their own now. Don't drive up here every week and do their laundry. Don't call them every day and wake them up and make sure they get to class on time. Don't go and email their professors if you don't think they got a good enough grade on their exam. These are college students. Be their counselor and their consultant. I mean, as I said, I mean, this happens all through life. We have to counsel them and pray with them. We got to coach them while we can. But I don't want them to be dependent on me forever. Neither does my wife. I mean, we talk about all the time. My goal for my wife is that the kids leave. She stays. And vice versa. We want that. That's healthy for them. We're proud of them having their own family and their own careers and their own lives the same way we had that. Our parents did that for us. So here are a couple of thoughts on this. Godly moms prepare their kids to live in the world without becoming part of it. Is this a Christian thought? Well, yeah. Listen to how Jesus talked. He told his disciples, I'm going to heaven, prepare a place for you and everything's ready. I'm going to come back and get you. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. Ask my father to send the Holy Spirit. He wants to be with you. He'll be in you. He'll empower you. And I've given you God's word. So you have God's word to guide you. And then he prayed this. I've given them your word and the world hates them because they don't belong to the world just as I don't belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. I mean, understand. I mean, Paul was discipling Timothy so Timothy could go tell lost sinners the good news about Jesus. Lois and Eunice invested in Timothy. Timothy then became a right-hand man to Paul. Timothy became a light into a dark world. What if little Sally or little Jimmy or our kids, what if we're training them and coaching them? We keep them away from harmful stuff that's going to ruin their lives. We coach them how to have self-control and self-discipline and how to pray and read God's word. We give them comfort and counsel and we consult with them where we can. But we're not trying to raise a bunch of mama's boys and mama's girls. We're trying to raise a bunch of warriors for the kingdom. The current generation of children is going to grow up to be the next generation of Christian leaders. We get the opportunity to do that now. That's the goal. That's the game we're playing. Godly moms help their kids become less and less dependent on parental guidance and become more and more dependent on guidance from the Lord. This is what Paul was referring to in Colossians 2. And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. When you become dependent on him. Oh, this is important. That our children learn to read the Bible that our children learn to pray, that our children learn to trust the Lord. We only have a few years to help train them in these things. That's why we do vacation Bible school. That's why we have student ministry, children's ministry. We're here to help. But this is, this is what's happening. We don't want our kids pulled out of the world. We want protection from the evil one. The devil is real and we live in a wicked world, but Jesus is stronger 
Last point. Godly moms get their identity and significance from their relationship with Jesus. So it doesn't matter what phase we're in here. Each of these phases has challenges. Each of these phases has joys. But our significance comes from the Lord and knowing that for this stage of life, he's got us right where he wants us. I've been crucified with Christ. That's what Paul said. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm glad we have a Mother's Day. I'm glad we can remind ourselves of these things this day. Moms, thank you. Thank you. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, I want to thank you for Mother's Day. I want to thank you that we have an opportunity to remind ourselves what's going on here. I thank you, Lord, that um, you give us godly moms who can teach us to pray and read the Bible and can encourage us and console us, but can also tell us some things with kindness that we may not hear from anybody else. Lord, sometimes it feels rewarding to, be, to work with our kids, and other times it's a challenge. So wherever the moms are in the room right now, I pray that you will give them encouragement and strength and remind them you have never left them, you will never leave them or forsake them, and you will help them. I pray that you remind all the rest of us to pray for the moms. I love what Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. Oh, Lord, we keep praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of the call, of his call. So, Lord, I just pray that you will help every mom in the sound of my voice live their lives worthy of the opportunity they have as a mom. That you give them wisdom they don't possess on their own. You give them kindness and love. Oh, God, that you give them strength. We pray these things in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen.